Although we like to keep our animals off soils and wet, we certainly like to irrigate when there are no animals on the land, or at least have been off for several days before we irrigate. But, um, what we're going to transition into is uh, looking, using signs or using tools in the soil to conserve or add the appropriate amount of irrigation to enhance the productivity of your soil. And, and so ideally what we want to do is we want to, find, we want to apply just enough irrigation water to maintain a uniform application across the field, but not too much so that we lose significant amounts of irrigation to deep percolation. So what we're trying to, what Ken is going to talk about is essentially striking that balance of adding enough water to get uniform distribution, but not too much to lose it to deep percolation and or to excessive surface runoff, which is a water quality concern. So we're kind of touching on two concepts here, water conservation and water quality concerns. So unless there's anything you think I should hit on. Oh, hey, talk about the roots there. Yeah, one of the key uh, things that is good in order to understand the volume of soil that you want to irrigate is to dig a pit such as this and identify where the rooting depth is. In this situation, you can see that I'd say 90% of our rooting area is right here in this top foot, maybe foot and a half of soil. So that could be the thickness that you're managing for, plus or minus maybe six inches. So that soil volume um, is, is the volume that, that you want to irrigate. Anything that goes beyond that is essentially lost as deep percolation is not going to significantly supply water to your crop. So um, what, what Ken's going to talk about is, is what types of probes um, and where to place them to be able to understand um, how much irrigation is too much and when should you irrigate, how frequently should you irrigate to maintain productivity of your, uh, your crop. And so the first step in that is digging a small hole. It doesn't have to be this beautiful pit that um, was dug for us, um, but a small hole uh, to examine things like, is my soil compacted? Where are my roots and how deep? And then where should I put, uh, or what should I be looking for, either with sensors or just with eye observations in the soil to make informed decisions? Any questions about the soil here real quick? Otherwise, I'll come bring over here and we'll look at some moisture probes that we can use to help make some decisions about when to irrigate. And then we eat lunch, I promise. So, challenge is standing out here Do you want to one? looking at this field trying to decide should I irrigate it? Now, guys that irrigate a lot get a sense of when they need to irrigate. But a lot of us just irrigate out of tradition. We just irrigate because we do it every 10 days, that's how we do it. Sometimes our irrigation is dictated to us by the way water is delivered. The irrigation district gives you water on every 10 days whether you want it or not. But if you have some flexibility, then ideally what you do to conserve water and reduce the opportunity for runoff is irrigate when the soil moisture status, when it reaches a level where you're going to start to diminish um, crop production or damage the, the plants, they start going into to drought stress. And so one way to do that, there's a couple ways to do it, one way to do it is to install some soil moisture probes. This is a resistance block. It's just this bottom part here. And basically, the way it works is you install it into the ground and um, you soak it up really well overnight, a couple nights, install it into the ground, and make sure you've got a really good connection between this, this probe and the soil. And then as the soil wets up and dries, this thing sorbs and desorbs water. And you've got a, we've got a meter that we can plug into it and you hook that meter to these two um, wires and it runs electrical current through there. The resistance of this to conduct electricity 
as, as it gets drier and drier, it, collect, it conducts electricity less efficiently because water is a conductor. And so there's a relationship between that resistance and the suction, um, the tension. Basically, it's measuring how strongly is the soil holding water against the plant that's trying to tug it out, right? The plant's trying to pull the water out of the soil, the soil's trying to hold it back. And at some point in that battle, in that tug of war, the soil's going to win, and that plant's not going to be able to get adequate water. And you want to irrigate before that happens. And so that, when that happens, is going to depend upon the texture of your soil, whether it's a sandy soil, a clay soil, a loam soil. Um, Toby, what would you call this? This are clay loam soils clay loam. top, and clay is in the bottom. Clay is in the bottom. So there's been a, quite a bit of work done by some, some farm advisors some of, um, and some specialists who work on irrigation. And there's one of the handouts that you got um, is this one right here, and it talks about um, basically how to make some decisions about when to irrigate and how to use this kind of monitoring tool to do that. And uh, if you look um, on, let's see here somewhere, <coughs> there's a table here and it gives you, and these are first approximations based on a lot of on-ranch monitoring that's been done, but as Roger said, you're going to want to make an approximation of is this enough forage for a cow. You're going to want to make an approximation at these centibars, which is the reading you get, this is the recommended. So for a clay loam, um, recommending that we irrigate when this top reading gets somewhere between 90 and 120. And so somewhere, maybe on your ranch, it's really closer to 90. Or maybe on this pasture, it's closer to 90. Maybe on that pasture, it's closer to 120. And so this will get you started. And you and come there, in. Sorry. Go ahead. No. There's, a there's a flow chart on the next page to teach you how to determine the texture of your soil that you can follow. What you have. Alternatively, you can use your soil survey um, to get a, a, a clue. Yep. And so what we do, what we recommend and, and what these other these other advisors recommend is that we have um, install these kind of at two depths. And um, there's one, and what we've settled on here and from looking at, at rooting is one that's essentially putting the midpoint of this at about six inches down into the soil, right into the heart of that rooting zone, and then one down to about, about 18, which is putting us down towards the bottom. And so we irrigate when this one hits the correct level. We decide it's 90. When this gets to 90, it's probably time to irrigate. Um, and this one, what you don't want to see is you don't want to see this one becoming saturated. Because when you irrigate, this is down at the bottom of the root zone. You want to get this up to about 90. You want to keep this at about that appropriate level, but you don't want to get it saturated. And with with these centibar readings, the lower the number, uh -huh. the more the wetter the soil, the higher the number, the drier the soil. So this is telling you it's time to irrigate. This is telling you if you're putting so much on that you're irrigating the bottom part of the soil profile, which you don't need to be irrigating, particularly in a drought year, because you're just wasting water. And in soils, water doesn't tend to move in long in, in great distances unless it's saturated. The soils lose their ability to hold water when it's saturated and then it just releases it to gravity. And so this idea, this, these just come when you, if you buy them, and this is just one company, a company called Watermark. There's other companies that make them. It's very um, widely used technology. But basically what you get when you buy them is you get this little probe and the wire that comes with it. And so putting these out in a field where there's cows or maybe a swather or something, some guys have come up with the idea of, of and, it, and to help with the installation, of just epoxying them onto this half-inch pipe and get a reducer that goes on top. You can get a cap. You can feed this wire into it, and you can put these screws through and attach these cables, and you've got a pretty durable unit down in the ground, pretty flush. If you've got cows in this field, it's probably not going to hurt them. And you're probably low enough that you're, if you're running it over, they clip this field, you know, about this high, you're going to run over it and not, not have a lot of problems with equipment. So, so it's a pretty so durable approach. And you're saying that I get this and the wires coming out of there, yeah. and then I make all the rest. Of you make all the rest. Okay. Yeah. And, you could uh, take them in for a horse pasture. You sure could. You could use Put them. them in like a you could do anything yeah. you wanted. And, yep. And if you're worried about it, you can buy those irrigation boxes. Yeah. That might help, or if a little tiny explosion. Little explosion right? Yeah, you know, just whatever works. But the primary thing is to make sure that when you install these, and the way I install them is 
just got this, just a rod. It's the exact same diameter as that. Mark it with a Sharpie to the depth I want to drive it. Drive it down in to that depth. And then what I do is I fill that hole with a slurry of water. So it's been soaked for about two days, right? You want it good and wet when you install it. Fill that hole with a slurry of water and, and local soil. And then when you push that down in there, right, all that water comes bubbling up. You've just got a mucky mess in that, in that nice tight fit. And then you've got really good connection. These things will fail, uh, like the term is it, when, they, when it cavitates. And that's when, if it gets dry enough, the soil will pull away. And there's an air between the sensor and the soil. So they won't work under really, really dry conditions, but they're perfectly appropriate for irrigated pasture. And so you get that good connection is the main thing. And put it in at depths that are going to be meaningful to you. And then once you've got it put in, I just put these in the other day, so they're, the readings aren't going to be really very accurate. It takes a little while for them to equilibrate, you know, so they're totally saturated. You just put them down in a hole full of water. That's all got to come into balance now with the surrounding soil. So you may not want to trust the readings, maybe, to you've irrigated once or twice. They're kind of an equal And then you can start reading those, and they give you they put them out with a little meter, attach it with alligator clips to these, take a reading, and this is the six inch one right here, and it's reading 75. So let's assume it's right. It's been in there a long time. It's good data. I got my chart. 75. I got a clay loam, my soil science friend tells me. And so it says I probably don't need to irrigate until it's 90 to 120. So I'm probably okay. So I'll come back in a couple days maybe, take a look at it, decide if I need to irrigate. If I come back out, it still says 75, but the crop's starting to wilt. Well, I'm going to irrigate. I mean, you can't just mindlessly follow this. That's telling you, well, 75 is maybe where I need to irrigate in this field. And so you'll kind of learn that with trial and error. And it'll depend upon probably the time of the season. It might depend upon the mixture of, of whatever your pasture plants are, how much clover, what type of grass you have. All that stuff will probably um, affect you. And if this darn thing won't read right, you know, and you can just pull them out and reinstall it if you have any trouble with it. And in terms of selecting a place to put them in the field, I just try to select a place that's fairly representative of the field. It's getting irrigation, but with the majority of the fields being irrigated, it kind of represents the type of plant community and kind of the topography, the soil of, the, of, the, of it. And probably one's enough for making management decisions. Um, you know, if you've got very different parts of the field, maybe you add another set. Um, but, you know, you don't want to go crazy. This is just a way to give you some guidance. And I would say it wouldn't be very long in doing something like this where you'd have a pretty good eye for making the decision. The problem is, is figuring out where am I right now? What's my calibration? And uh, would you use this then to determine how long to irrigate as well? Yeah, so you would you would ir say you'd irrigate, and you'd come back and say, okay, I put... 50 miners inches on this for four hours. Come back, let it sit overnight, come back out, read these. The six inch ought to read zero or close to it, right? Pretty low, five to 10. Um, if it's not reading that, then, and you know it's in, in, installed well, then you have a real problem. You can take it yearly. But it should be down pretty low. The other one ought to be, you know, somewhere around 90 to 120 for this type of soil. And um, then you're in good shape. If you come out and this one's reading 200, it's really dry, the deeper one, you probably didn't irrigate long enough. Next time you'll irrigate a little longer. If you come out and it's reading zero or five, you've irrigated too long and you've probably lost water. So you want to shorten it up. And, you know, we know that, so they irrigate here roughly seven to 14 days, depending on how the water's coming, maybe 10 on average. Um, you know, Depending on the 10 day period, if we have a 10, 10 days of 100 degree weather, they're pretty dry, these fields are. If we have 10 days and it's you know in the low 90s, we get a very different scenario here. So even within the summer, when we're all, oh, it's hot, it's terrible out here in the summer, you still see some pretty big fluctuation due to how much temperature you have over that, that 10 day period. So maybe on that one, when it's really hot, you might want to irrigate shorter. So it might be on a seven day. You may lengthen it out when it's been a little cooler, and you might not irrigate out until 14 or 15 days. And on average, the idea is that you'll conserve water, you'll 
but maintain the soil moisture in a way that probably is most beneficial to growing your crop. And the other thing you'll do is if you're really over irrigating, you'll start losing clovers and grasses and you'll start growing junkets so there's Baltic brush. So there's asked about how do I control Baltic brush? Well, if you can control your irrigation and dry it up a bit, that's a great way because it, that means that's a wet site. So some places where you're irrigating a little too heavy, you actually start seeing some of those, some of those plants that aren't very good forage. Otherwise, time to eat tri-tip. Awesome. Uh, these probes are about, I think, I think they're about 30 bucks a piece. And the meter that reads them, uh, I think, oh, a couple hundred. You just need one meter. And, you know, you can go on to Ben Meadows or Forestry Suppliers online, um, probably various other places, and, uh, and get these things and look at different products. Is it in that? Um, it's not in the handout because they didn't want to promote one over the other, but it says what it is. It's a resistant block. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me or, or, or one of us and we can help you with it. Does it matter if you irrigate at night during the day? Um, I don't, for the purposes of, of, of crop growth, I, I don't know that it matters that much. Um, some people say that if you're worried about temperature, water coming off of the field could be pretty hot if it's irrigated during the day compared to at night, because as water runs across these fields, it can gain a lot of temperature. If that water's going into a creek that's got salmon in it, that are cold water species, irrigating at night is one way to try and lessen the temperature of the water that you're contributing. Otherwise, I'm not sure. You get a little bit more evaporative loss yeah. if you irrigate in the day, if, if water quantity is an issue. The, the, the problem is when you've got to get across all these fields, Push it 24 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, when we have water here, it's running somewhere all the time.